to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. I've got a quiz for you today. Ready to take a quiz, a little pop quiz? Yeah, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know about these pop quizzes, man. I gave that up in grade school. All right, well, this one's going to be fun. I'm not going to grade you. I'm just going to hit you with the question, and let's see what answer you come up with. Fair enough? All right, so I'm going to list a group of companies. And what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what do these companies in these three different groups that I mentioned to you, what, what do they have in common? Are you ready for that? Now, I realize I didn't make this a call-in show, so it's hard for you to pick up the phone and call me. That's okay. It's totally fine. You can yell at the radio. I'm okay with that. All right, Group A. Ready? American Motors. Brown Shoe. Studebaker. Collins Radio. Detroit Steel. Zenith Electronics. And National Sugar Refining. Okay, that's Group A, all right? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you Group B. You're probably starting to recognize that these are, these are companies that have been around, okay? They, they have existed in our economy. All right, Group B, ready? Boeing, Campbell Soup, General Motors, Kellogg, Procter & Gamble, Deere, as in the John Deere type, IBM, and Whirlpool. All right, ready for Group C? Here's Group C. Facebook, eBay, Home Depot, Microsoft, Office Depot, and Target. Okay, so what do all these companies have in common? Well, let's, let's first break down that, that first group, that group that I read to you in Group A. I'll, I'll just hit you with them again. Ready? Ready? American Motors, Brown Shoes, Studebaker, Collins Radio, Detroit Steel, Zenith Electronics, and National Sugar Refining. All of those companies were listed in the Fortune 500 in 1955. But when you looked at the Fortune 500 in 2014, none of those companies were listed. All right, let's talk about Group B. Ready? They included Boeing, Campbell Soup, General Motors, Kellogg, Procter & Gamble, Deers and John Deere, IBM, and Whirlpool. Now, all of the companies in that group were in the Fortune 500, not only in 1955, but they were also in the Fortune 500 in 2014. Now, that last group, those more modern companies, Facebook, eBay, Home Depot, Microsoft, Office Depot, Target. None of those companies were in the Fortune 500 in 1955, but all of them were in the Fortune 500 in 2014. So what am I getting at? I am trying to describe to you what goes on in the stock market. I am trying to describe to you what goes on in stock indexes. See, stock indexes are essentially a representation of the overall stock market. So there are companies that are identified and selected to be part of the indices because those companies tend to reflect what the overall health of the market is supposed to do. So instead of you managing you know, like a thousand different companies in the stock market, you manage 500 companies or whatever you put in the Fortune 500. And you manage those companies. And when those companies are not performing in accordance with what the rest of the market is doing, you kick those companies out and you bring new companies in. What I'm getting at is that the stock market continually 
calls itself. So that the companies that were peak performers back in 1955 may not be peak performers today. As a matter of fact, the companies that were around in 1955 may not be in existence right now, or they may not be in existence in their, their current state. But real estate, real estate is relatively unchanged. It is relatively unchanged. I mean, if you think about it, if you look at a house that was built in 1955, that house still exists. Chances are that house still exists unless there was a peril that occurred to that property. Maybe it burned down. Maybe, maybe there was an earthquake and the, the house collapsed. Maybe there was a flood and the property was flooded and the house washed away. I mean, perils could happen. But the reality of it is this. The majority of the homes that were built in 1955 are still in the inventory today. They are still in the inventory today. Now, if you think about it, these, these are properties that are, what, about 65, 66 years old? So they've been around for a while. These properties have different systems within the walls. In other words, the plumbing systems that exist in that 1955 house are a little bit different than the plumbing systems that go into a house that's built in 2021. The electrical connections might be a little bit different. The gas connections, maybe you have different types of materials that supply the gas to the property. It really doesn't matter what goes on in these particular properties. The fact is this, real estate, once it is produced, has a tendency to last a very long time, much longer than some of these companies that were riding high in 1955 in the Fortune 500 that no longer exist today. Now, some of those companies, they still exist today, but some of those older companies were replaced by newer companies, which makes you wonder what happens to those companies that were in both categories at category B. When will they be replaced? I don't know. I'll tell you what, when we come back from the break, I'm going to tell you about some companies that have been replaced. Stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. You know, I think it's crazy to think that 88% of the Fortune 500 firms that existed in 1955 are gone. They're gone. These are companies that were around before I was born, and they're gone. These companies, they exited certain ways. They either went bankrupt, maybe they merged, maybe they still exist, but they've fallen from their Fortune 500 ranking. Yeah, so they're, they're not quality enough to be included in the Fortune 500 list. And most of the companies on the list in 1955 to be honest with you, are unrecognizable forgotten companies today. If, if I listed some of those companies, you would go, huh? I've never heard of them. As the life expectancy of companies continue to shrink, because life expectancy of companies tends to shrink, organizations have to be much more vigilant than ever in remaining innovative and future-proving in their business models. I mean, think about it. Don't companies have to become even more capable of solving mankind's problems to be profitable today? Either that or, you know, just take control of the information flow that goes to everybody. That's another mechanism. But I think real estate, man, it's, it's tried and true. I mean, the, the stuff that we do at Lifestyles Unlimited has been around for a very long time. 
Dell Wamsley put our educational platform together 31 years ago in Houston, Texas. And he did it specifically because he got tired of working 60 plus hours a week. I mean, you know, he was, he was young, he was vibrant and his employers, or I should say his taskmasters, you know, they, they were ready, willing, and able to make him work 60 plus hours a week in a business to build that business up to become profitable. And then at a certain point, Dell just got to the point where he got tired of making a lot of money for a lot of other people. And he got tired of innovating within those businesses only to find that the people that he worked for didn't really care. And as a result of that, Dell started looking elsewhere. He didn't want to work until he was 60 some odd years of age. He wanted to get off of that roller coaster. So he started doing his own personal research and he dug into real estate investing. I mean, he read a lot of material. He looked at a lot of stuff that made sense. He looked at a lot of stuff that was just terrible information. And he called through all of that, embraced the, the information that was exceptional and eliminated the rest of the stuff. And as a result of that, he put together the map that we follow at Lifestyles Unlimited. We have 50,000 members that are following this map. And this map is customizable to your particular situation. And here's the thing about real estate. You don't have to go out and innovate, innovate so that your company can grow. And then maybe you could be listed on the fortune 500 and then you can work, 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 work to try and maintain that listing only to find that maybe sometime in the distant future, all of a sudden the products, goods, or services that you produce are relevant and your company goes the way of 88% of the fortune 500 firms that existed in 1955 that don't exist today. Real estate is still around. Those 1955 houses are still around. Those 1955 houses are making money for the individuals that own them. This is the beauty of real estate. This is what I'm trying to share with all of you, but let's, let's take a look at some of these businesses that you're probably familiar with. As a matter of fact, many of these businesses, I think, I think they were household names. Let me, let me just hit you with the one that in Al's opinion, I think just completely engine. I can't even think of the right word. I'm thinking they were ingenious. They were innovative. They were, they, they completely changed the landscape of entertainment. I'm talking about blockbuster. You remember Blockbuster? They were the home movie and video game rental service giant. I mean, they were founded back in 1985 when I was in college, the first go round. And arguably, they became one of the most iconic brands in the video rental space. As a matter of fact, I think they just kind of wiped out all the mom and pops and, and they just kind of took over. And in 2004, Blockbuster had peaked. They had over 84,000 people employed worldwide. They had almost 9,100 stores across the world. But because they were unable to transition towards a digital model, because that's what was coming. That was the future. Remember streaming? Streaming was being talked about way back in 2004. Well, Blockbuster, they didn't. They didn't embrace that digital model. And ultimately, Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy in 2010. And here's why. Back in 2000, a little company you're probably familiar with called Netflix, they went to Blockbuster and they said, look, we got an offer. You sell us Blockbuster for 50 million bucks. Yeah, we'll buy it from you. We'll, we'll buy Blockbuster for 50 million bucks. And you know what the Blockbuster CEO did? He said, hey, man, I'm, uh, I'm not really interested in your offer because I think what you guys are doing, that's a very small niche business. Yeah, it's a small niche business. And 
by the way, all you streaming guys, you're all losing money. So why, why would we do this? I think Blockbuster is going to be fine. And we know what happened, right? We watched one Blockbuster store after another close their doors. I think I saw an article on the internet that said there's there's actually one Blockbuster store still out there. Now, I don't know if Blockbuster itself actually owns it, but there's one store out there. That's a far cry from almost 9,100 stores about 11 years ago. And ironically, as, as late as July of 2017, Netflix had 103, almost 104 million subscribers worldwide with an annual revenue of $8.8 billion. Yeah, so Blockbuster's gone, Netflix is here. Let's see how long Netflix sticks around until the next bigger and better thing comes along. Oh, by the way, that real estate stuff, it's still sitting there. It's still sitting there. It's got somebody living in it. They're enjoying living in that property. Everything is fine. So let's talk about Polaroid. You remember Polaroid, right? I mean, those are the guys. Remember the land camera? Remember, remember the, the fact that you could point this camera at somebody and you could take their picture and out of the bottom of the camera, this, this little thing of film would come out. I don't know what those things were called, but it would come out and you stand there and you stare at it for about a minute and magically the picture, it would materialize. But wait a minute, something happened to Polaroid. When we come back, I'll get into it. Stick around. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So as we were going to break, I was mentioning another company that had been on the Fortune 500 list back in 1955, a company by the name of Polaroid. And Polaroid is a company that had been around for quite a long time, a lot longer than I had been around on this planet. I mean, we're talking 1937. That's when Polaroid was founded. And that's that's when they became best known for their, their instant films. That's, that's really what that thing was. It would, you'd take a picture, it would spit out the, the film, and then the film would develop right before your eyes. It was like Wow, this is like really cool stuff. And despite its early success in capturing a market that had very few competitors, because you got to remember, this is, this is kind of new technology going on, right? Polaroid was unable to anticipate the impact that digital cameras would have on its film business. Yeah, moving away from that analog film to that, well, that digital film that we use today. So what happened to Polaroid? Well, I think they fell into what's considered a success trap. What's a success trap? Well, a success trap is where you think everything is going swimmingly well and there's nothing that's going to happen that's going to impact your business model. Well, unfortunately, something happened to impact their business model. As a matter of fact, Polaroid neglected the need to explore new territory and enhance their long-term viability because they stayed with a business model and a, and a particular product that they thought was going to take them all the way through the future. And they missed the opportunity of transitioning to what was becoming a new but untested digital platform. The original Polaroid Corporation they went bankrupt in 2001. And you know what happened? Well, as part of the bankruptcy, the brand Polaroid and all of the assets that Polaroid owned, they were all sold. They were all sold off. Now, in May of 2017, the brand and intellectual property of the Polaroid Corporation was acquired by the largest shareholder of the Impossible Project which had started out in 2008 by producing new instant films for Polaroid cameras. Impossible Project was renamed Polaroid Originals back in September 2017. You probably didn't even know that. 
probably didn't even know that they were out there, but that's what came out of the ashes. Ironically, one of the realtors that I have a relationship with sent me an offer for a property. Yeah, I mean, basically just sent me some information about a property that was built in 1937. It's kind of interesting how this kind of ties together, right? So whereas Polaroid was founded in 1937 and it went belly up in 2001, but in 2017, some things were kind of resurrected from the ashes of Polaroid and created something else. Well, actually, this same kind of thing can happen with this property. Because this property that's showing up on the market was built in 1937. So you got to think about it. What do you know about properties that are about 80 plus years of age? You don't have to know a whole lot. I mean, let's, let's be honest about real estate. You have a foundation. Is it in good shape or not? You have a roof. Is it in good shape or not? Do you have plumbing systems? Are they in good shape or not? How about electrical and gas systems? Do you have those? Are they in good shape or not? Do you have to make any modifications to the electrical system? Because maybe because it was built in 1937, you might have aluminum wiring in the property. Not a problem. There's remedies to, to take care of that without rewiring the entire property and still making it completely safe. What about the kitchen? Does it still look like a 1937 kitchen in there? Or are you going to make it different? This is the beauty of real estate. Because a property that was produced in 1937 is providing an investment opportunity today because over the years, different people have owned that particular asset. Some people owned it to live in it. Other people owned it to rent it out to other people that wanted to live in it. Different people that chose to rent it out probably had different standards for what was acceptable as far as screening their residents, taking care of the property, getting it ready for residents to move into, all of these things. And here's the thing I like about this property. It has the ability to produce about $450 of cash flow for you. $450 a month in passive income to buy this particular property. Now you're going to need about $30,000 to do the entire deal. But let's just let's just take for a moment the income streams this property is producing. So if we annualize that $450, we come up with $54,000 in income. Now if it takes $30,000 to buy into this deal to do all the renovations and by the way, we're going to use a hard money asset to acquire this property, renovate it and get it ready for the resident that we're going to select to live in it, it's going to produce an 18% cash on cash return, 18% return on your investment, which is probably a better rate of return than you're getting in most of your investments. Now I know the stock market is doing reasonably well. As a matter of fact, it looks like it, it hit some new highs again. So congratulations to all of you that are in the stock market that are very happy that you're doing extremely well. My caution to you is this. Polaroid thought they were doing extremely well. Blockbuster thought they were doing extremely well. These are two companies that were traded by Americans in the past. And both of these companies are no longer traded by Americans because the products, goods, or services that these companies produced have become irrelevant. You heard me correctly, irrelevant. But housing, housing is not irrelevant. Housing is a need. It is a genuine need in our country. Housing is something that Americans demand. Now, housing is not a right. I've read the Constitution. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you have a right to own real estate to live in. There's, no, there's nothing in there. Now, you have the right to own real estate, but there's nothing that says you have a right to own real estate for you to live in. Yet, in our society, we demand that. 
our society says, you need to live somewhere. And as a result of that, we put people into different places where they live. Most people choose where they live. I choose where I live. I chose this beautiful house that I bought for my beautiful bride and myself, and I love it very much. I have chosen the rental properties that I have purchased, that I have renovated and made very nice and made available to people that are looking for very nice pieces of property that they can call their own. This is the beauty of real estate. And, and it doesn't wear out. Real estate technically doesn't wear out. Okay, technically the, the improvements that you make on the property, all the things that go on the property, everything that isn't land, let's put it that way. Land, land's not gonna wear out. It's not gonna wear out. It's gonna be here long past you and I. But all those improvements that you make on the property, Technically, they do tend to wear out over time. All of those systems do tend to wear out, so they do need to be taken care of. And that's okay. When you are properly taking care of a real estate asset and you're returning it to its luster, to its glory of bygone days, and you're creating something that people walk into and they just go, wow, this is nice. Can I rent this? This is the difference between Polaroid and real estate. Stick around. I got more for you. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. Hey, do you guys remember Jeffrey? Yeah, I'm, I'm not talking about the guy who lives down the block from me. I'm, I'm talking about Jeffrey, the Toys R Us giraffe. Do you remember Jeffrey? I mean, he was in every Toys R Us commercial. And Toys R Us was one of those organizations that was around for a very long time. But Toys R Us, man, I'll tell you what, they got caught up in a financial struggle that pretty much caused them to go under. Yeah, they went under. So what happened to Toys R Us? Well, I think one of the things that led to its own undoing was it signed a 10-year contract to be the exclusive vendor of toys on Amazon in the year 2000. Now, Amazon, as we all know, is a massive entity now. Amazon began to allow other toy vendors to sell on its site in spite of the deal. And Toys R Us, they got a little offended by it. They did. And what did they do? Well, they hauled Amazon into court specifically to end the agreement in 2004. And as a result, Toys R Us missed the opportunity to develop its own e-commerce presence very early on because they decided to piggyback on Amazon. And as a result of that, Toys R Us really missed the whole online shopping world. They did. They totally missed it. And, and they thought brick and mortar was the way to go. But in May of 2017, they planned to revamp their website as part of a $100 million three-year investment to jumpstart its e-commerce business. A couple months later, September 2017, they filed for bankruptcy under pressure of $1 billion in debt that it had taken on. And because the online retail competition is very fierce, and you got to remember, by 2017, Amazon is not the little fledgling it was in 2000 when Toys R Us was, you know, working out a deal with them and figured they could push them around. No, Amazon is now a powerhouse in 2017. So, Toys R Us made a bad decision. Now, 
it decided to keep its physical stores open. And we know what happened. One store after another, after another, after another. They all closed. Toys R Us, an icon from my childhood, an icon. It no longer exists. But a property that was built in 1948 after World War II exists in a Lifestyles Unlimited member's inventory. And that property is not worried about whether or not Amazon is playing fair with it or not. Nor does it care whether Amazon grows into a major online powerhouse. That property doesn't care. All that property does is it sits there and provides clean, functional workforce housing to a family that desires it, that is calling that place home. A family that's living there, playing t-ball in the front yard, preparing meals inside the kitchen, running around the backyard with the little ones, tucking the small children into bed at night, giving them a safe place to be in this crazy world. See, folks, right there, right there should be your reason for investing in real estate. It, it shouldn't be, oh, I can make 450 a month. I mean, okay, you, you have to be profitable if you're going to be in business. Because if you're not profitable when you're in business, you will be out of business. Just ask Toys R Us. Just ask Blockbuster, right? Here's the thing. Human beings in our culture require housing. They require housing. In our society, we provide housing in different ways. We provide it through the public marketplace. People can buy their housing if they want. They could buy their housing and live in it. Totally fine in America. Or they can rent their housing. They can go out and they can find something that makes sense for their pocketbook and based on where they work and other factors, and they can rent that housing. There is a, another form of housing out there. It's government assisted. In other words, the government steps in and they help people pay some or all of their housing expenses. And there's technically a fourth form of housing. It's called homelessness. There are people in this country that choose to be homeless. Now, there are people that are homeless due to other circumstances. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that homelessness is, is a personal choice all the time. I think homelessness is a condition that some people experience. Some people choose it. Other people just experience it and they don't want it and they want to get to living in a home. And I think at the end of the day, when you're trying to figure out how do you get away from all this craziness in the world? How do you get away from a boss that's driving you bananas? How do you get away from a job that just seems to take and take and take and never gives? Well, this is how you get away. You change your mindset. You make a decision that I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm tired of this. It's not working. I've been doing this a long time. And I'm not even talking about the retirement stuff in your future. I'm just talking about the daily grind you're going through. Do you want to do that for another five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? How long do you want to keep going? And all you're doing is cycling money. Yeah, you bring money in and then you spend it going out. And you never retain any. You don't invest it. Okay, you invest it in a 401k, but you have no idea what your money's invested in. You really don't. You don't even read that perspective when they send it every year. All you do is you look at your, your app or you look at your website from time to time. You go, oh, there's more money in there, so I'm doing okay. Okay. Yeah, there's more money in there right now until there isn't. Real estate investing 
when done correctly, which is the only way we will teach you how to do it, real estate investing will get you to a place of retirement in the next five years. Meaning by changing how you do things in your life, by prioritizing certain things that need to be higher on your priority list than things that are up there right now, we can get you to a place where you create passive streams of income from the rental real estate. Those passive streams of income, as they build up, will eventually meet or exceed what it costs you to live. When you get to that point, you're retired. That's what retirement is. And you arrive at a decision point. You decide whether or not you're ready to walk away from that job, or you decide whether you want to stay with that job, or you decide maybe you want to change jobs. Because at this point in your life, you have control again. You have control. You have something that you have not had in your life for a long period of time because you gave that up when you entered the education system. You gave that up when you entered the workforce. You decided trading time for money was the way to go. And I'm here to tell you that's fine, but for a limited period of time. And you need to get off of that bandwagon and get onto our bandwagon. Because when you get onto our bandwagon, you start investing your money correctly. That money starts flowing back into your household so that it changes the dynamic of your life. It's a beautiful thing because now you have the opportunity to call the shots on what you want to do. You don't have to worry about being Toys R Us or Blockbuster or Polaroid Camera for that matter. You don't have to worry about going by the wayside because one thing that I know for sure is that real estate is not going away. As a matter of fact, they're building more of it each and every day. And even if real estate tends to wear out a little bit over time, we have a mechanism where we can go in, analyze that property Take a look at what it's going to take to bring that property back to its glory days. We're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to fix that property up. We're going to make it pop. I mean, people are going to come into that property and they're going to go, I love it. And then we're going to enter into a lease contract with somebody that's going to love living there and take care of the property. And you know what we're going to do next? We're going to go do it again. So my lesson for you today is this. To get started... You need to go to lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. When you get there, sign up for our free workshop because it all starts with a proper education. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.